Hi, today we're going to talk about function-based interventions and competing pathway um, charts that you might use to help yourself understand whether your function um, is something you will want to use various interventions at. So we're going to look at, is it a skill-based intervention? Should we put that intervention at the point of the antecedent? And our ABCs would tell us those, and that's why I had you collect all those. It was very important. Or should we consider a consequence-based intervention? So when we look at the ultimate goal that we want to um, be able to do, we ask ourselves, you know, what is our ultimate goal? We want to change behavior without the continuation of reinforcing the target behavior. We also should not propose to reduce an undesirable behavior. If we haven't already identified an alternative desirable behavior that we're going to call the replacement behavior, we expect a student to display instead of the undesirable behavior. And that may involve teaching a new skill. Look for interventions that allow the student to change behaviors without reliance on those external reinforcers. We want to move away from those eventually. So let's look at what kind of interventions and where we want to put them. So if the student's unable to perform replacement behavior, and that would be an indication by the ABCs that you did, if they were just sitting there, you'd want to check all of the spots um, where the skill gaps might be. So is the student really able to do it? They might be intelligent enough, but had they been taught all the steps and was it something they could successfully do? And then you're going to use a skill-based intervention to teach the replacement behavior if they haven't. And we're going to give some examples of those in a minute. If it's an antecedent condition showed up on your ABCs and your observations that trigger that problem behavior that you see that's keeping the student from benefiting from teaching and learning, then you want to use an antecedent-based intervention to adjust the antecedent. And we're going to talk about those and look at some examples. So part of the issue is you must know where the behavior starts to happen. And that brings us to that function piece and helps us identify that. Um, if the consequences reinforce the problem behavior and you and I ask you to look for patterns of that maintaining or sustaining by consequence um, on the ABCs that you took, then you want to use a consequence-based intervention that will modify the consequences. Let's take a look at some examples. So here's a skill-based intervention worksheet that I use to identify how I'm going to do this. So my student has the um, target behavior or problem behavior, as many people call it, that they make rude and disrespectful comments whenever they're asked to read aloud in class. The function we hypothesized and confirmed was task avoidance, to avoid, okay, or escape. So the replacement behavior that going to we're going to teach is that once the students required the prerequisite, the requisite reading skills, I need to be sure they can read aloud, that there's all of those things with fluency, articulation, um, that they are comfortable and confident in that. Then they'll read aloud when the, they're called upon. And because the student lacks the requisite reading skills, this is where we went. The teacher will provide additional instruction to improve the reading skills. They'll scaffold oral reading activities for the student by previewing with them a passage before asking the student to read it aloud. And we're going to adjust the antecedents to that because he did um, not have the requisite reading skills. The teacher will not call on the student to read aloud if the student has not had the opportunity to preview the material or if the student has not acquired the necessary reading skills yet. That's the antecedent. We're going to modify consequences as well. So the first one is we're going to reinforce the replacement behavior. So the replacement behavior is once the students acquired the requisite reading skills, the teacher will reinforce the replacement behavior, behavior of reading aloud. We have to have a re reinforcement that the student wants, of course. Two, we're not going to reinforce the target problem behavior that reading aloud piece, we're going to use extinction when the student's doing something 
that we said was a target behavior. Let's look at an antecedent-based intervention. So in this case, my students' target behavior, problem behavior, was when they pre were presented with multiple academic tasks all at once. And the student responded by scribbling on the papers or tearing them up or proclaiming that that work won't be done and the teacher can't make it happen. I always love those ones. So the function, of course, is to escape or avoid task avoidance. The replacement behavior is that we want the student to raise a hand to request a break when they're feelings of being overwhelmed. And we found that through confirming our hypothesis of task avoidance and why, okay? We did numerous interviews and observations and ABCs and clearly saw that that's what was going on, that the student did not know how to or was not comfortable asking for a break or for help. When presented with multiple tasks, the student would complete the tasks and is what our replacement behavior in the long run will result in. We aren't going to teach a skill at this point, but we are going to adjust our antecedent so that when the student becomes overwhelmed by multiple assignments and the teacher will know that they can eliminate the triggers in those antecedents by alerting the student to upcoming tasks, by offering the student a choice. Which of these three assignments would you like to start first? And providing prompts on how to get started. If we're going to modify the consequences, we're going to reinforce the replacement behavior. And that replacement behavior, which will fade over time, is a student asking for a break um, and going to a break area when they feel overwhelmed. And of course, we're not going to play into what we saw in our ABCs as a consequence of um, maintaining and reinforcing by cajoling and, and having the students scribble and, and tearing up the papers and refusing to work and telling the teacher it's not going to happen. So let's look at a consequence-based intervention. In this case, when presented with academic tasks, the student whines, complains that the work's too hard, or engages in mildly disruptive behaviors such as foot tapping, pencil tapping, or clicking the tongue. I like that. It's always a nice sound. <laughs> and we decided that the function was to obtain teacher attention, the adult attention, um, which told us a whole bunch of things about what the student might need. Um, so the replacement behavior was when the student was presented with the academic task, the student would work through them to com from beginning to completion. Um, we decided that the student had that skill, so we did not need to teach that skill. We did adjust the antecedents that the teacher would assign tasks that making sure they were within the student's ability level without gaps in learning. Um, we'd modify the consequences by reinforcing the replacement behavior, that the teacher would provide positive reinforcement in the form of attention and verbal praise when the student was working consistently. And um, that will provide attention when the student begins working on a task and as the student continues working on that task. And again, we were going to use extinction uh, so the teacher would not reinforce with consequences um, when the student whines, complains, or make noises. Let's take a look at a completing pathway chart um, for behavior that might help us identify function as well. So in this case, we have Teddy who missed um, the 1230 medication that they need to take. And in the afternoon classes, the teachers will make multiple demands where Teddy responds by making negative self statements and writes foul words all over the assignments. The teaching staff typically send Teddy as a result of these behaviors to the office with a discipline referral for being disrespectful. When you look at how that plays out, the function we started to identify was that Teddy wanted to avoid certain tasks. So that competing pathway chart is the, that's the top of the chart and how it helps us get to a hypothesis. The next one that we have is Kennedy, who's walking down the hall as other students pass, they'll say, what's up? Kennedy looks back and says, who are you looking at? You want some of this? Typical kind of aggressive kind of thing, but kids continue to walk on by and shake their heads and say, what a weirdo. Um, 
as we watched Kennedy, we hypothesized it was, the function was to obtain peer attention. Just didn't have the social skills to continue the conversation well. That, that stuff when you go into a party and you're supposed to do small talk and entertain, some of you don't like it, some of you love it and are able to do it well to obtain peer attention. All right, so here's what our chart would look like when we add the alternative behavior. Okay, so let's take a look at setting events, antecedents, the problem behavior, consequence, and function. That's where we've been looking. But in this case, at antecedents, we want to look at an alternative behavior that also supplies the same function. But first, setting events. These are tough ones sometimes because often people say antecedents or setting events are different from one another, and we want to make that clear. Setting events are something that usually happens before, it occurs before, but not always immediately before, like an antecedent usually is something that's happened before, even though we may not see it. Um, in this case, setting events could be that they argued with the parent on their way to school or before they left and got on the bus, and then they had a grumbly situation with the bus driver or peers, or it could be they did not eat breakfast. I also use this um, strategy called HALT. I ask students, um, are you hungry? Are you angry? Are you lonely or are you tired? Let's take a look at that. So when we think about this on a chart, we look at our competing pathways chart this way. We say that the setting event strategies and the antecedent strategies we're going to use make the problem behavior irrelevant. So setting events, we either want to eliminate if we can or neutralize the setting events. We often can't eliminate what goes on before the child leaves home with their parent, but we can neutralize um, if it's a consistent pattern and uh, make, make contracts with the parent on how they approach whatever the child is doing in the morning that is bothersome. Antecedent strategies, we want to prevent or modify the triggers, and we're always looking for those triggers through the ABCs. And behavior teaching strategies, that makes the behavior problem inefficient, incompatible with what the replacement behavior would be when they display it. So we're gonna teach that replacement behavior. And the consequences, we make problem behavior ineffective. So that's, we're gonna reinforce that alternative or teach uh, replacement behavior. And so we're gonna, res our response to the behavior is corrective feedback, just like we would when we're doing long division teaching. We'll do the same thing with social behavior. So this would go underneath the competing pathways chart that you see here. So let's see one where we might walk through with an alternative behavior. In this one, we have a setting event that the student got in a fight with their friend on the way into school. The antecedent then is that they didn't get the right answers in reading group. The problem behavior was then they started having a tantrum, crying and stomping, okay? Consequence was the teacher sent the um, student to the principal, okay? And of course, we can hypothesize the function was to escape the reading group. Okay, because that was an uncomfortable situation there. So let's take a look at if we added an alternative behavior in there. It might look like this. Setting event, fight with a friend. This is an antecedent-based strategy, remember? So the replacement behavior is to teach um, the student to learn when to request a break. And evidently, as always, that new skill would eventually be faded. So the antecedent is they didn't get the right answer in reading. Notice that we say we go no further with the problem behavior, we go straight to alternative behavior and reinforce that. No longer do we have a function to escape the reading group, but the function is still met by being able to request a break and that new skill of requesting a break would eventually be faded. So when we look at what is the context, what happens immediately, before the problem behavior that we see. Sometimes we can't see it or identify the antecedent. So we do know we want a desirable alternative and we have to identify what that desired behavior is. The problem behavior is what is presenting the problem displayed. 
and the acceptable alternative behavior. Like, so if we can't get the total desired, what's an acceptable alternative, okay? So if we get the desired alternative, it's what's the typical consequence? What is likely to be the result or the consequence? And we often think once we get the student doing the behavior, we quit giving a consequence, whereas before we've been giving a pretty severe consequence consequence of nagging or cajoling or asking the student to um, do the work and then we're satisfied when they do the work and they stop. We have taught them that the other behavior would get attention and um, a consequence that maybe they desire and we don't recognize it. If there's a problem behavior we have to look at what is maintaining the consequences of that as we talked about in the ABCs looking for that pattern. And if there's an acceptable alternative behavior, what's the result and what happens as a result of that being acceptable? Okay. So we'll look at this one where we say the setting event was a peer conflict. The antecedent was the teacher and the peer um, requested something from the student that they weren't able to um, give as a social amenity. Our desired behavior, of course, would be able to that our student would be able to comply with the request. Like, um, here, give me this, the red ball so we can play you know, square ball on the playground. Um, many times our students don't have the capacity to hand the ball to someone else. And for our younger or less able students, because sharing is a higher level skill. Um, the problem behavior used for our students is that escalated profanity and sometimes even physical aggression. The excess acceptable behavior would have been for the student to walk away from the peer um, and walk away from the um, teacher as in, I need a break, if that's that severity. So we're gonna look at those in a case study that identifies function. So Maurice is our 16 year old student who reads at the second grade level. I've worked with lots of those, I bet you have seen some. He throws his reading book across the room and uses language to inform the teacher that he does not intend to complete his seat work. Difficult. Often Maurice's behaviors escalate and he leaves the classroom, okay? See if you can complete a competing pathways, behavior pathways chart to help identify the function of Maurice's behavior. Here's mine. So he's in reading class given an assignment to read. The desired behavior is I'd like to see Maurice comply with the request and ask for help. Um, the problem behavior is that he escalates to a profanity and often elopement. The acceptable behavior would he would listen to a peer read. Okay. So when I look at the typical consequence, um, I would love to have it be the request is completed from the desired alternative. But typically, um, the consequences are maintaining the problem behavior that we see. An acceptable alternative consequence would be to avoid the teacher directive involving reading by listening to a peer read. So here's a summary of what we just talked about. Research shares that the use of extinction when used alone is problematic and difficult to implement. Um, you simply can't use planned ignoring very well. There's too many variables in classrooms and we find that it, it is very difficult to use to eliminate. So we need to really teach, think about the five um, principles of reinforcement and behavior change and systematically learn how to use them that they become the top thing in our mind. And as you identify the function of the target behavior, you can design a function-based intervention as you look at it. That's what we're after. We're after a design of a function-based intervention. And of course, knowing or hypothesizing and then confirming the function is where we wanna be at this point in our FBA, heading towards a behavioral intervention plan. We need to directly teach social skills to our students who lack these skills. Um, social skills are so important in the world that makes the relationships go round. It creates communication between people and often gets our needs met when we didn't even realize that we weren't saying what we needed. I really want to emphasize that we need to teach social behaviors the same way we would teach long division or academic problems. 
And so when you put a student at the board and they're doing their long division, you do pre-correction if you know they make a mistake at a certain point often, or you would um, have them back up and look at where they were and you, but you wouldn't yell at them. You wouldn't um, dismiss them for disrespect. You would teach long division step by step and identify the error patterns and where they're missing steps. So let's consider teaching and using a design function-based intervention. So our next steps, we wanna empower our students so that our behavior intervention plans our teaching tools. We want to have an identification of replacement skills, but that must be based on the function of the behavior. And so this has been why we have done ABCs and we have continued to do those behavior, function of those behaviors. So let's um, continue to talk about those and I look forward to seeing you.